or a life ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. Let me, let me warn everybody or just uh, let people know, especially newcomers. When I first uh, became a believer here and started to read the scriptures and learned I had to keep Passover, I was very, very confused. Because uh, everyone was doing it at a different time. And there's probably more controversy about the date to keep the Passover amongst uh, the Hebraic roots or believers. And and there's people literally doing it at a different time each year. And there's a lot of confusion about it. I mean, so much so later on when I figured all this out, I developed a joke that only people that understand what I'm talking about will get. And the joke is one day I was at a conference and somebody said to me, good morning, brother. And I said, that depends whose calendar you're on. So. You'll get that if you uh, if you understand that uh, people are are in different calendars and they're they're following different things. But the key is it's not about I'm right and you're wrong. It's about look, we're called to to for throughout all your generations to keep the Passover the best you can with what you got, and uh, you don't throw away everything because you don't have everything. You do the best you can with what you got, and we have a lot of the principles and the meaning of Passover. So uh, one of the things Michael Root says is you don't keep Passover, you celebrate Passover. Well, that's one way to put it. Uh, we can't keep it exactly the way it says. Uh, and some people say, why not? Well, it's because uh, there is no temple uh, and, uh, and times are a little different. And we're not sacrificing animals today the way we did back then. And uh, a few other reasons why not. We can't keep it exactly. But that doesn't mean we throw the things we can do out. And we are called to fellowship. It's the first night. Uh, we are called to uh, eat together, and 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 there is a lamb, and but we got to remember it too. We got to remember Yeshua in the Passover, uh, because without him, I mean, you have to understand when you read the book of of, of uh, Exodus, and you see here when the children came out, uh, anyone that had the blood on a door uh, was was saved. Uh, anyone that had the blood on a door was was safe. Uh, from this death angel that, that took the firstborn of every house and destroyed them. And I'll tell you this, even if an Egyptian would have overheard the Israelites speaking or the Hebrews speaking, and they said, you know what, I'm going to try that. I'm convinced it would have passed right over there the door, door as well. And, uh, you know, the, the blood the blood covered and saved them. And we got to remember when we think about this passing over, we think about the name Passover. We could say, yes, they, they, okay, they were let out of Egypt, out of the bondage and slavery of Egypt, and now they're coming into the promised land. We could look at that and remember that occasion that happened and, how, and, and so on, and, and all the plagues leading up to this plague of the Passover. But more than anything, we got to think about what helped the people survive, and that was the blood. The blood of the lamb, and 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 that is a great example of the pattern and and principle of Yahweh, of the blood of the lamb saving us. And just like each week when we take the Shabbat and we're told to keep that day set apart and 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 and, and rest, but also focus and praise Yah more than ever. Well, yes, we should be doing that every day, right? So we got this special day. And this day more than ever, we need to remember the blood that covers us. And it, it needs to be uh, exalted and spoken about. And, and what I'm telling you is if you take Yeshua out of the Passover, uh, you don't have a Passover. You don't have a, a Savior. You don't have, you know, the blood. It's all about the blood. And and we need to understand the, the whole thing and the significance of that. And I know some people that are literally physically put blood on their doorposts now. And some people say, well, you're crazy. We don't have to do that. And uh, if that brings them close to, to, what, to what happened, as long as they're understanding what Yeshua did for us, you know, so be it. You know, but, but it's all about, it's all about uh, the blood. It's not about a, a, a system of Judaism. It's not about all these traditions. Of, of, of what they say, and, and a lot of it is tradition that some people like to uphold, the hide in the matzah and, and and the egg and all this. It's all tradition. Even even the idea of the the, the bitter herb and, and all this, you know, and all these other traditions, and some of them are, are good and fun, but you have to have 
a story or the significance of of the blood that saved the people during that uh, when that death angel passed over those houses. And and it's hard. I often say when we're taking out of uh, out of uh, the context of scripture, it's it, but you know it's hard to to resonate with that on an emotional level. But we have to put ourselves in that picture. So let's go back and let's let's think about this in today's times. Let's say uh, we were in a town. I have friends that are missionaries in Iraq. They're within fifty miles of where ISIS is, and even at ISIS's strong time, they were still there. And they were missionaries. These people literally got and flew there and live there to proclaim the gospel of Yeshua. And let's just say uh, you decide to do that. And let's say you're there and you're feeling safe because even though you're only 50 miles from ISIS, you're still feeling pretty good because, uh, because, because you know, you got your safety, you can, maybe you got some security around you or whatever. Let's just say that security breaks down and now you have no security. And you know ISIS is there. And these, 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 they don't mess around. And, uh, and and you have no protection from anybody but Yahweh. You know, and even though all the plagues had happened up to this point, still, they didn't have an army protecting them. They were in slavery. And, and Yahweh, you had to have faith in Yahweh to even do something like this. And, and, and they did, and they had faith. And even though their faith wandered and went back and forth, uh, this was an amazing act. So can you imagine being in, in a country there where ISIS is and all the security that you thought you had went away? And at any moment, you could have got a knock on your door or a kick in your door, and, and, and that would have been it. Uh, but the significance of that, and, and if you hear you know, uh, the leader of your group say, you know what? You know, put the blood, put this blood in your door. This blood represents Yeshua. And everybody that has this is going to be safe. And it's like when King David, his son and everyone who was coming after him to kill him, he was able to sleep at night. How was people coming to kill him and he was able to sleep at night? You know, I know people that didn't pay their bills and they worry about that when the phone rings because somebody's going to tell them they owe them money and they can't sleep. Let alone somebody's coming to kill you and you're going to, you're going to sleep at nighttime. And these people put the blood in the door and they sat down to eat a meal. Now, this was a quick meal. They actually were told not even to sit down. It was so quick. But still, you know, I mean, you hear death, angels flying over houses and blood on doors and not know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm, I like to eat food, but I'm not stopping to eat a meal. <laughs> you know, I'm getting out of there as soon as possible. And, and, and these people actually stopped to eat a meal. Uh, it's an amazing thing that th this this event, this whole event is really, truly amazing. And uh, we're supposed to have some sort of connection to that and, and remember that. And it's not a traditional thing. And that's the problem we've come today is people have made it a traditional thing. Oh, it's Passover. So it, it, it's, it's not supposed to be a thing that we just do repetitively just because we have to. It's something we should do because we want to. And, uh, and we want to remember the blood, and we want to remember Yeshua dying for us, and, and we can never forget that. So it's, it's not the date that we do it that's more important. And look, this is the around the time he said to do it, and we can't all be right, but we can all be wrong as to, as to what date it is exactly. But we have to make sure that uh, we're, we're trying to do something. And from the first time we tried to do it to now, we, we might have gotten some things corrected. We might have done many things so wrong, but, but we're making that effort because Yah says to never forget, to never forget. And as a memorial or remembrance to do this throughout all your generations. And that's what we got to do. So, uh, so, so yeah, so, uh, so don't get so uh, focused on uh, are we doing this at the right time or not or the right date. And just remember, you you, you got to do it. And for me, I do it uh, really when when I know this, this with, with fellowship. I mean, even if the dates that I think it really is is different than other dates, I'd rather do it in fellowship with others on the wrong date than do it the right day by myself. And uh, that's that's where I'm personally at. But uh, so, but just remember the blood uh, next week when this happens, and uh, and hopefully that'll that'll make you want to remember it. And then we got, you know, the, the, the giving of the Torah, the 50 days later, and then we got uh, the, the, the other feast days coming up and then the, the fall feast. 
It's, it's really an amazing thing that Yahweh would take all these special days out of his special days for us to remember. And you could ask somebody when, when, uh, when St. Patrick's Day is, they say right away, March 17th. You could ask them when Valentine's Day is, February 14th. You know, we don't have a lack of knowledge, folks. You know, in the scripture that says, my people destroy for lack of knowledge, what that says in the Hebrew is, we're destroyed for lack of knowledge of the Torah. It just doesn't say we're destroyed for lack of knowledge. We have knowledge. We have worldly knowledge just fine. But it's the Torah that we're, 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 we have uh, the issue with, the lack of knowledge of Torah. Out of the world, all my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways. Torah life ministries come out of the world, 